Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for January 3rd, 2019. So today, this is the second message of this new series. I'm teaching a brand new series entitled Heaven on Earth. And today's message is entitled God's Representatives in the Earth. You and I, if you're born again, we are God's representatives in the earth. So today what I want to do is I want to go back to the beginning. If you read the first two chapters of the book, of the book of Genesis, Genesis 1 and 2, then you see a beautiful picture. Now, while every human who came after Adam and Eve, we were born right after the fall of man. And because of that, we, we have had to experience life after God judged the serpent, the woman and the man. But prior to all of that, we see a different picture. Prior to all of that, we see a beautiful picture in the Garden of Eden. And that's what I want us to go back to just quickly this morning. So in the beginning, the Bible describes Eden as this beautiful place. There was no rain, you know, because rain would come later. There was no rain to water the earth, but actually no water was needed. Like, you know, from a rain perspective, the Bible says that water came up from the earth and spread out all over the ground. Wouldn't that be nice, <laughs> right? You don't have to water anything. Water just came up from the earth. It's like God put in his own divine irrigation system so that the Garden of Eden would have enough water to, to bloom and to flourish. And not only that, the Bible says then that Eden was fed with four rivers. So that there were four rivers feeding this area of ground, right? Eden wasn't it, when we say garden, some people think like a little garden. No, you, you can't have four rivers feeding a little plot of land. This was a lot. This was more like a forest than a, than a garden, right? But it was a big area. So it's fed with four rivers. It has this divine irrigation system. And Adam was charged with ruling it. With, with, he was in charge of working the ground, right? So he was in charge. But watch this. God had already set him up for divine success. Adam did nothing to earn or deserve that setup. God did it by his unearned and amazing grace. And then God brought animals to Adam and said, what do you want to name these animals? And Adam got to name the animals and whatever Adam named the animals, that's the name that they became. And where did he get the names from, right? Or so where did he learn how to work the garden? Where did he get the names, you know, as far as coming up with names? The answer is simple. He got it from God because God himself was living inside of Adam. Adam didn't live by education because he never went to school. Adam lived by revelation. He received the divine revelation from the father. Adam was receiving downloads from heaven on a daily basis. And that's how he lived. He was equipped with supernatural insight, wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding. So because of that, because he was connected to the Father, he walked with God in the cool of the day. He was walking with God and God was walking with him. He was prepared to rule, to govern, and to dominate this planet. And that's what he was supposed to do. He was created, Adam was, and Eve in God's image and after his likeness, right? So he was created in God's image and after God's likeness, that's Genesis 1 and 26, and he was supposed to exercise kingdom, dominion, power, and authority over this planet and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the face of the earth. So he was in charge of everything, just like God is in charge of everything. Do, do, do you see this? The father was ruling up there in heaven and Adam was supposed to rule Adam and Eve down here in the earth. They were supposed to be an extension of heaven down here on this planet. All of that was supposed to happen and it was supposed to happen through man. However, man fell, Adam sinned. And from that moment, the, the Old Testament, from the time that Adam sinned and he got kicked out of the garden, from that moment, the, the Old Testament then goes on and, and it's, it shows a, a picture of people that are disconnected from God. Whereas Adam and Eve, the Bible says in Genesis 2 and 25, the man and his wife, they were naked, they were not ashamed. They were so God conscious that it didn't even register that they were naked because they were connected to the Father and they were walking in insight and wisdom and revelation and knowledge and understanding and they were walking with God and God was walking with them. But once they were disconnected from the Father, because remember the Father said, listen, you can't eat from the fruit of that tree the day that you eat of that tree, you're going to die. And he ate. And the Bible says that when he ate, the eyes of both of them were open and they realized that they were naked and they were ashamed. Why? They died. They didn't die physically, but they died spiritually. The Holy Spirit was removed 
from Adam. And at that moment, they were resigned to living their lives as mere humans. Isn't that a shame? Prior to that, they were not mere humans. They were supernatural. But when the Holy Spirit was removed, they were resigned to living their lives as mere humans. Prior to that, everything that they had, God gave it to them freely by his unearned grace. After that, man was going to have to work by the sweat of his brow and work for everything that he got. And he was resigned to living his life by human effort. So here you see this picture of power, kingdom, the authority, dominion, grace, not working for nothing. Everything is given, has all this power. And then after that, disconnected from the father, you have to work for everything that you get. You're working hard by the sweat of your brow and you really don't have a clue. God's ways are above your ways, his thoughts are above your thoughts and you're disconnected from him and you don't know what he's thinking and all of these things. Those are the two pictures. And that's terrible. But Jesus came to get it back. Glory to God. If you fast forward to the New Testament, one, uh, this, this new covenant that was established by Jesus, uh, uh, John calls it this covenant of grace, right? John said in John 1 and 17, the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Listen to the language that John uses. The law was given, but grace came. The law was given on tablets of stone through Moses. But, but when it came time for grace, grace wasn't given, grace came. Jesus came himself to restore the breach. I could talk about this right here for a long time, but for the, for the sake of time, I'm just going to stop there. So what does this mean to you today? Because I know that you're like, Rick, this is a good story and everything, but I, I have a lot on my calendar. I have a lot on my schedule. Give me some nuggets for today. All right, fine. I have three things to share with you on this morning. I want you to open up your heart now to what God is saying. You ready? Three things for you this morning. Here we go. Number one, man was created to rule, govern, dominate, exercise kingdom, dominion, authority on this planet, right? If you read the beginning of the book, that was his original intent. Now, as God rules and reigns from heaven, he expected us to rule and reign over this planet, over the earth. The earth was, or was originally intended to be an extension of heaven, right? So what God sees in heaven, he wanted to see in the earth. And he put man here, and man was supposed to do that. He was supposed to extend heaven to the earth. I'm talking about living in heaven on earth. Number two, Adam sinned. So when Adam sinned, he lost his, his authority, he lost his power, and he, and he lost his direct connection to the Father. He was disconnected from God. So all throughout the Old Testament, you see that the Holy Spirit was no longer living inside of Adam. The Holy Spirit lived in, in the Holy of Holies, in the most holy place inside of the temple, above the bema seat of the Ark of the Covenant. And so nobody could really go in there but one person. The only person authorized to go into the presence of God was the high priest. And even then, he was only authorized to go into the presence of God once a year on the Day of Atonement. So here you have one man who once a year was authorized to visit what Adam had inside of him 24 seven. So the old Testament is like, man, that's terrible. Where, where you have people, the Holy spirit came upon people, but he wasn't in them. So, so one man once a year could only visit what Adam had permanently. Oh, and, and Adam lost it. it was, he was disconnected, but Jesus came to get it back. And then also, you look at the Old Testament, they didn't really have that divine power, right? You don't see uh, miracle signs and wonders. You don't see them casting out devils and demons. You don't see them speaking with new tongues. That type of power that Adam had, he lost it. And because he lost it, we lost it. Humanity lost it. But Jesus came to get it back. Glory to God. So when Jesus came, if you look at Jesus, he suffered, he bled, he died, he rose from the dead. 50 days later, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out and the New Testament church was birthed. So now the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit doesn't live inside of a temple anymore. No, no, no. It's, matter of fact, when Jesus said it is finished, the Bible says that the veil in the temple that separated mere humanity from the presence of the Holy Spirit, the veil in the temple was ripped from top to bottom, not from bottom to top, because that would have meant that a man did it. It was ripped from top to bottom. God himself reached down, grabbed the little veil, 
and ripped it from top to bottom. He was saying, I am no longer going to live in that temple. Now you're born again. You are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit lives in you. Glory to God. So you don't have to go visit a place in a building to go visit God. God lives inside of you. You are like Adam in the garden. You have God on the inside. You are supposed to walk and talk like Jesus did, knowing that God himself is living in you. Number three, and finally for this morning, Jesus got, a, got us out of everything that Adam got us into. Because of Jesus, we are redeemed. Because of Jesus, we're redeemed, not back to Abraham, but all the way back to Adam, all the way back to the Garden of Eden, all the way back to this perfect picture of what it was like between God and man before the fall. Now that we're born again, now that Jesus redeemed us, now that we're walking and we can walk with God like Adam did in the cool of the day and we can walk with God and God can walk with us and, and you can go on a run or you can go on a walk and you can put on some worship and the Holy Spirit is there with you. Glory to God. And he can talk to you like he talked to Adam and you talk to him like Adam talked to him and because that's been restored he now expects us he charges us like he charged Adam we are supposed to represent or represent him in this world we are supposed to represent or represent him in every meeting every conversation all the activity that we engage in we are representatives of God on this planet that's why we're not supposed to live our lives just daydreaming about going to heaven someday we're supposed to live our lives focus on bringing heaven to the earth every day that's how we're supposed to live this is the life that we're called to live we're supposed to live as jesus is in this world we represent or represent god everywhere we go let's close this message out with a declaration of faith i want you to repeat after me now in faith, from a believing heart, say this. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus to repair the breach between you and me. <laughs> Glory to God. It was your original intent for man to represent you in this world. Adam was supposed to emulate heaven on this planet. Adam had kingdom, dominion, power, and authority, but he lost it. Jesus got it back. Adam had direct access to you. He walked with you in the cool of the day. He received downloads from heaven, but he lost it. Jesus got it back. Now, because of Jesus, I am filled with your spirit. I have your power and authority. I hear from heaven daily. I receive my marching orders from you. Since I am connected to heaven daily, I don't live my life focused on going there. I know I'm going to heaven someday, but for now, I live my life focused on bringing heaven here. My life is an example of heaven on earth. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages and you want access to my notes, I am emailing you these notes every day for free. Go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button. You'll get an email from me. You'll get this in written form. Listen, go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Rick Pena. Subscribe to the channel. Download the app, any app store. Just search, search for Rick Pena. Everything we provide you is free. We want you to get the word down in your heart. We want you to maximize your purpose and potential while you're in the land of the living. Walk today heaven on earth minded. And do me a favor, before you leave the screen, make sure, if you haven't done already, that you share this message on your social media, share it on your timeline, share it with your friends. I love you and God loves you. God bless you.